Hello everybody and welcome to the first battle report for Space Station Zero. That's right, the new game is here. Uncle Adam and I are so excited to bring you Space Station Zero. Space Station Zero uh, has been something I've wanted to, to make for a very long time and I couldn't be more excited to take you through the first challenge you'll encounter when taking your crews into the dark heart of the ancient space station. What is Space Station Zero? In Space Station Zero, you're going to command your crew as you explore this ancient, derelict, and dangerous space station. This is a sci-fi game of survival, exploration, and mystery. So, as you uh, continue to go through the branching narrative of the challenges, not only Will you lose crew along the way, leaving their bodies forgotten in the ancient depths of the space station? But you also might make a few interesting allies, or, hopefully, understand the mystery of what is at the center of Space Station Zero. So what do you need to play Space Station Zero? Well, first, you need a crew. We'll talk about my crew in just a moment. You also need some enemies. In general, the maximum amount of enemies you're ever going to face is six enemies per crew participating. Space Station Zero features two main types of enemies, robotic or inorganic and sort of mutants or organic creatures. So realistically, with less than 20 figs, you have everything you need to roll with Space Station Zero. Speaking of rolling, you're going to need some dice. This game uses D12s, more or less exclusively. So you need a good grip of D12s, about 10 should do you just fine. You also need, of course, some kind of measuring device, just a measuring tape, a play space, which can be as easy as something you mark off. The standard size is 22 by 30, uh, which is the size of, say, a, a kill team board or a war cry board or something like that, but you can use whatever you like. And lastly, you need some kind of sci-fi terrain. But of course, if you want to just tip over cereal boxes and pop cans and stuff like that, hey, I'm not going to judge you, and no one else should either. But with that stuff ready to go, you're ready to play. My crew that I'm taking in today is a group of bold space pirates. Now, I chose the most elite version of the crew, so this is only four members, plus the leader, so five total figs. Meaning their stats are all higher, but I have a lot less activations and a lot less places to be on the board. However, our bold space pirates are well-equipped and ready to get into it. I have my leader and her jump pack, which is these little wings that let her fly. I have my engineer, ready to not only buff the rest of my people, but also handle nasty uh, technical challenges within the depths of the space station. I have our trusty soldier, our bodyguard, our warrior, uh, who is armed uh, to the teeth and ready to get into it. Uh, I also have a medical officer, uh, because of course when people are injured, you, it's good to have a doctor around. And lastly, my ace pilot, uh, which is my only veteran in the crew. Uh, and my ace pilot uh, has gun, will travel. With this small intrepid crew, I begin my adventure into the space station in challenge number one. Challenge number one is the docking bay access port. Now, this is the first challenge you will encounter when you enter Space Station Zero. In fact, any time you take a crew into Space Station Zero, you'll start with the docking bay access port, because that represents all of the different various and sundry access ports that surround the safe and settled area all of the aliens have created here in Space Station Zero. So if you want to get deeper into the space station, you have to pick one of the many access ports that lead down into unexplored space. To represent the fact that there are, in fact, a multitude of access ports, every time you enter this first challenge, what your obstacles and enemies are will vary. Every challenge will have some obstacles and some and or enemies that you have to your crew has to overcome. These could be things like poison gas leaks, nuclear reactors gone awry, insane robots, deranged mutants, uh, giant, angry, uh, 
piles of mud that are burying all of your people alive and might be sentient. Who knows? What exactly lurks in the space depths of Space Station Zero is for you to find out as you get into the game. But in the first challenge, the obstacles and enemies are randomized. And in this particular time, I have rolled ancient sentries, meaning there are some old clanky uh, robots who are trying to get in my way, as well as a dangerous poison gas leak filling the room. So to gain victory in this first challenge and explore deeper, I have to first deactivate and shut off the poison gas, as well as defeat all of these ancient robots that seemingly might have a little bit of murder on their mind. So, let's get into it. All right, my crew is all set up, as are the enemies, as per the challenge directions. So my crew is over here in their starting area. And then we have two packs of three ancient sentries, these clanky ancient robots with their, uh, well, not working guns, but certainly very sharp claws are ready to try to stop me from progressing deeper into the space station. Unfortunately, in this challenge, there is also a poison gas leak, as we can tell from all these little gross uh, spots on the board here. The gas is leaking from these three objective points. So my goal in this challenge will be to defeat all of my enemies and shut off the poison gas leaks. The poison gas leaks will present a challenge to me for as I activate every turn, I'm breathing in the poison gas, which is of course going to potentially cause damage to me. Now, fortunately, my crew is tough and elite and ready to, uh, to handle all comers here, so we'll see how they go. So, uh, let's get into the challenge. Turn one. Uh, in Space Station Zero, the player, or players, if you're playing co-op, always get the first activation. Uh, why? Because it's fun. Now, sometimes enemies may be hidden, and so jump out at you later in the challenge, but in this one, we're aware of all the enemies, and players get to go first. So, my first activation over here will be my Engineer. Uh, when my Engineer activates, he has to make a life challenge test. That's because the air is full of poison gas. Now, this is referred to as a life save, and it's to avoid damage he would take from the poison gas. This is a life save three, meaning I roll dice equal to his life score, which in this case is six, uh, because he is uh, an elite crew member. And if I, I have to get at least three even results to pass the save. Every point I miss it by will result in... Uh, a point of damage allocated to my engineer. So, evens are successes, odds are failures. That's the general rule of the game. Here we go. All right. So, in this case, our engineer got... That was a four. Uh, got three successes. Unfortunately, the engineer also got a critical failure. A critical failure is any time you roll two ones on a check, in which case the check fails no matter how many successes you have. A critical success, on the other hand, is when you get two 12s in your roll, and that means the check is a success and your number of successes is doubled. But the critical failure means, ouch, our engineer breathed in a deep breath of that poison gas and gets three damage. But that's okay, they're tough, they can handle it. So with that save resolved, we now go into our move. The engineer has a move of four and we wanna get him moving over towards that uh, poison gas leak because clearly it is killing him very fast. So he's just gonna move out there, take his damage with him. Now that was his move, but he also has an action on his turn. And there seems to be a bunch of angry clanky robots over here, so he's going to shoot one of them. The Engineer is armed with a heavy kinetic weapon. The Engineer has a base combat of four, and his weapon adds three to that number, giving him a total combat of seven. So again, the Engineer is going to roll. Evens are successful. Odds are failures. Okay, no critical failure this time. And so we start by separating out all of our evens, which are those three. We discard the rest those four, sorry. So four successes. 
the opponent now rolls to defend by rolling their combat score. Whatever their base combat score is, their weapons usually don't matter. Uh, so in this case, the uh, Ancient Sentries have a combat of three. And the Ancient Sentry gets one success, two failures, meaning they reduce the incoming damage of four by one to three. Unfortunately, three damage is still enough to kill our Ancient Sentry retiring them to the scrap heap of history. The engineer has now completed his turn. He's ready to go, all finished. He's made his move out there. Now we attempt to retain initiative. So when you're attempting to retain the activation order, the player can, the active player rolls a D12. On a six plus the first time, you retain the initiative and may activate again. This gets more challenging, uh, the more times you attempt to retain initiative. So, unfortunately, I rolled a one. I do not retain, uh, I do not retain initiative. So, it goes over to the enemies. Now, with the enemy has an AI, it follows. Enemy activations start with the ones closest to any of the active players. So, it's going to be this guy who activates first and then proceeds on, and each enemy will do a series of things on their turn as prescribed either in the generic enemy AI rules or in the challenge specifically. In this case, the sentries aren't too bright and are more or less automated, so it's simply going to try to move and attack uh, my engineer here. Now, the sentry has a move of three and does not have a ranged weapon. There's no one in melee with it, and there's no one it can move to to attack, with its three inches of movement, because you have to be within one inch to attack. So instead, the sentry is simply going to move its six inches uh, for move and then using its action to move and basically put itself up here with the engineer ready to attack that engineer next round. With that, the enemy now tries to retain initiative and gets a seven. So they do. They retain the activation and may activate a second time. Once again, we have this other guy here, who is also too far away to attack, but can start moving up. The engineer who moved out bravely is quickly getting himself surrounded by enemies. The second time you try to retain uh, the activation, it's a 10+, plus, which this time the enemy did not get, and so it goes back to us. Uh, next up, we're going to activate our soldier, which is this girl right here. Now, the soldier only has a melee weapon at the moment, uh, and so, you know, she may get some more weapons as the game progresses. But for now, she only has a melee weapon, so she is uh, out of range of anybody, and we need to get over to this thing and start de de moving toward disarming it. But, because it's the start of her turn, she has to make her life save against the poison gas. Six dice, looking for evens. We got one, two, three exactly statistics which is enough for her to avoid taking any damage she knows to hold her breath unlike the engineer apparently she's going to keep her turn simple and just double move effectively she has a move of four so that'll give her eight inches of movement she's going to go out here and act as bait for these other robots when they activate because she's pretty confident in her ability to handle these old rusty robots in melee I will attempt to retain initiative once again. Got an eight. Since this is the first time I'm attempting to retain the activation, I will retain it. Now, so we will move to our ace pilot. The ace pilot is my veteran soldier. It's uh, the most experienced member of my crew other than the leader and has a lot of interesting capabilities. She's generally good in combat. She's pretty good at disarming things. So she's a great character overall. Now, the ace pilot has a move of four. Not far enough to go really do anything I might want to, but that's okay. What we're going to do with the ace pilot is just bring her right up into the middle. So she's not the closest to anybody, but she can still have a lot of zone of influence over the board. She's going to try to help our engineer friend who's getting surrounded out here. The ace pilot is also carrying a heavy energy weapon. So her base combat is four. And her heavy weapon adds three, meaning she has a total of seven dice to roll. She is going to go ahead and try to shoot this closest robot right there. So again, looking for evens. 
All right. One, two, three, four. Now, the ace pilot has a special ability that any time they roll a challenge test, they may re-roll a single one. So we're going to take that one and re-roll it into a six, getting yet another success. So she has five successes on our little robot friend. The robot rolls to defend itself. Gets two successes, reducing the incoming damage from five to three, which is not enough to save its life. And she blasts the little guy down, sending him to the scrap heap. I can attempt to retain initiative again, needing a 10. That is a three, which isn't going to cut it, so it will pass back to the enemy. All right, enemy activation. So we have this little guy is going to be the closest there. And we can see that if he moves his move, he will come within an inch of her and be able to attack. So that's what he's going to do. He moves his full move forward, ending it just an inch away so he can fight. Now, attacks that happen within an inch of each other are called close attacks. It doesn't actually matter... Uh, whether you use a gun or a sword or a pistol or anything like that, you can use any weapon at any range. It's Well, I'm sorry, you can use any weapon in close range. At uh, long range, you have to use guns and stuff, of course. Not throwing swords across the space station. Uh, but in close range, there's a little extra bit of combat, which we may hit here. So, our little ancient sentry has a base combat of three, plus one for his angry claws, meaning he rolls four dice. Oh, getting four big successes, everyone even. That's a scary result for our soldier who may just be in trouble. Fortunately, the soldier is an adept melee combatant. The soldier has a base combat of five. And normally, weapons, uh, the weapons that you carry, do not add to your combat challenge test roll on the defense. However... She is carrying a heavy melee weapon, which is good at parrying and defending. So when in close attacks, you can add that weapon to your defense, giving her a massive combat of eight to defend herself with against the four damage. So let's see how we do. Okay. Well, we certainly were good at rolling 11s. Uh, she didn't do great is the answer. So she only got two successes. However, once per turn, the soldier has a special ability to reroll two dice from a combat challenge test, which we will do here. We'll grab those two and reroll them. Getting two more odds. So failing still. Oh no! Meaning our soldier ugh, takes two damage. Uh oh. Did she overestimate her abilities? Maybe. We'll see. Uh, that finishes the robot's activation, meaning it's now time for uh, them to try to retain. They need a six, and on a one, they fail to retain the initiative. So it comes back to me. Uh, so my medical officer is hiding back here, smartly taking cover early in the fight. But the medical officer isn't just a doctor. I mean, she carries a gun as well. When she activates, she has to make a life save from the poison gas. However, she has hazmat equipment, so she gets plus one to her life save. So she actually gets seven dice, needing three successes. Which she manages to critically fail. Bum bum. So, the medical officer also takes three damage. The hazmat suit wasn't enough, and she breathes in a big... Big amount of that poison gas. Oh, it's a rough time so far in the space station for our intrepid crew. But she's still alive, and now she can proceed to do her activation. She's going to move her move of four forward. Just step right out there, trying to avoid the, the poison gas, even though it's not actually anything, but it just looks cool. And, of course, the, the medical officer, well, she carries a big gun. Uh, she, everybody in this crew of pirates, of course, can fight. Her base combat's four. She's also carrying a heavy weapon, meaning three. And she is going to go ahead and target this guy right here. She's trying to make sure the soldier 
doesn't get himself in more trouble. However, because a straight line drawn between these two figs, she can see him, but it intersects the building, that means that cover is in play. Cover adds two to your armor. Now, nobody in this fight actually has armor, but you will encounter enemies that have armor. Armor is a target number you need to roll. If you don't have any armor, cover provides an armor of four. What that means is when you roll the dice to attack, only even numbers of that number or higher count as successes. So in other words, my twos won't be anything. I have to get at least a four to deal damage. So, seven combat, needing fours for targeting somebody in cover. Let's do it. Okay, she gets one, two, three, four successes. The other three are odds. Every even is four or more, so all of her shots find purchase, or at least we hope. Let's see if the robot can dive behind cover. He's got four potential damage. He's going to try to negate through his own combat check. And he does negate two of it with a 12 and a 6. Unfortunately, that means two damage still goes through, and as the ancient sentries only have two life, eh. Bullets rain down, and the ancient sentry dies. That ends our medical officer's turn. We then attempt to retain initiative, needing a six, and fail. Which passes back to our last remaining robot. Uh, our ancient sentry is out of range to move up and make a melee attack, but of course can move directly to try to challenge the soldier, and so we'll simply try to come up and block off her path. With no other enemies to activate, it automatically passes back to me to activate my last figure. Uh, my leader, who uh, is our space pirate leader, uh, the captain of my pirate ship, who has a cool sweet jump pack because all cool sweet people in space have jump packs. Everybody knows that. Uh, so she actually has a move of eight, which is titanically fast in this game. Uh, so she, And she can ignore... Uh, vertical space when moving. Normally when you move you have to pay to climb up spaces. She does not because she has fly because of her jump pack. So she is going to simply put herself up here in a nice advantageous position where she can be ready uh, to go tackle whatever she needs to with her move. And then of course she's going to try to uh, bail her poor engineer over here out uh, who is not only damaged from the poison gas but also in a little bit of trouble with a, a robot on him. So, she's going to shoot across. The leader's base combat is five. She has a big old heavy weapon for three, meaning she's got eight dice. Here we go. And she manages to do more or less nothing. One success out of eight dice. Oof. Oof. That hurts. That's a long distance shot. She's shooting over a couple friends. The robot rolls to defend and manages to jump out of the way of her blast, taking no damage. With that, the turn is complete. All of the poison gas leaks are still happening, and uh, it's now time to proceed to turn two. Turn two. Uh, once again, as the player, you get the first activation. So we're going to activate the Engineer, who's here and stuck in this unfortunate spot. Now, my crew's edge is nanomachines, meaning that they have little nanobots in them that heal them. So, boom, the crew member heals one. Unfortunately, there is still poison gas, and so he will need to make his life save. Looking for three evens, which he gets. There we go. This time, uh, he's learned how to hold his breath. Pull a wet cloth over his mouth, no additional damage. Unfortunately, he still has an angry robot right in front of him, so he's going to do his best to try to get rid of that. With his, uh, with his heavy kinetic weapon, he's going to go ahead and shoot this guy in the face. Because that's fun. All right, and a good shot it was indeed. One, two, three, four, five successes. Uh-oh, our little robot's in trouble. Evens to defend, gets two, not enough, three damage goes through, 
eh. and that sentry is removed. Since the engineer only spent an action, he can still actually take his move and go ahead and get himself closer to the objective. Still too far to actually resolve it, uh, but he'll be there for next turn. We're going to attempt to retain initiative, needing that six. Oh, only a five goes to the bad guys. Now, these two are going to go. This is technically the closer enemy, so it's going to go ahead and attack my soldier in combat. Again, three base combat plus, plus one for their claws, looking for even numbers. Got three successes on that, so there's three potential damage on my soldier. Again, the soldier is great in melee, and so with eight dice rolling to defend herself against three damage, can she get there? Let's find out. All right, we got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so not only, and this is where we get to a fun part of close combat. Turns out swinging swords at each other from mere inches away is a dangerous thing. And so in close combat, if the defender ever exceeds the attacker in number of successes, then the attacker takes damage equal to the difference. So in this case, not only did she prevent all of the damage with these three successes, but since there are two more, two damage is dealt back to the attacker, and she parries and deftly maneuvers a riposte, ugh, striking down this ancient sentry. All right, the bad guys attempt to retain initiative on a 6+. plus. They get it, which means that this last one... Let's see if he's any better than his friend. Probably not. Only one success. That bodes poorly for him when fighting this melee monster. So, rolling to defend. One, two, three, four, five. Five successes to the one. Yet again, spinning like a whirling dervish. Cuts the enemy down on his own turn. The soldier's gambit of jumping out there paid off. Even though she took a little damage to begin with, she's okay. And with that, all the enemies are dispatched. But the challenge isn't over. There's still a poison gas leak. In Space Station Zero, there will be many challenges that have both obstacles and enemies. And you have to resolve all of them before you can proceed on. Just defeating the enemy isn't enough. In fact, many challenges will have no enemies at all. They'll simply have puzzles, traps, challenges, and other dangers that your crew has to overcome. So I have to keep activating because the poison gas is still leaking, killing my crew. And if I lose anyone before the challenge is over, well, then that's going to weaken my crew as I proceed further into the space station. But now I don't have to roll to retain anymore. I can just activate. So let's go ahead and activate my leader, uh, who has a life of seven. So she's going to roll her life save, needing three successes. Crit success. Whenever you get a crit success on a save or challenge, you double the number of successes you have. So in this case, she actually counts as having eight successes, more than enough to shake off the poison gas. She's far too tough to be bothered by that. And she's going to jump over here onto that with her move and attempt to... Uh, repair this poison gas leak. The challenge instructs me that repairing the poison gas leak is a reaction challenge test three. This is just like combat, but you're using other stats. She has a reaction of four, so she will roll four dice. Even numbers are successes, and she's trying to get to three. All right. And in fact, on her first roll, not great. She only gets one, but that's okay. Just like in combat, you don't need to kill every enemy you fight in one shot. With the reaction challenges to, in to interact with the obstacles, you don't usually have to do them all in one shot either. It's assumed that if there's a, a bomb that's about to go off that you're trying to disarm, or a leak you're trying to repair, or whatever the obstacle happens to be, it may take a little time, and your crew member can try repeatedly adding successes toward the total number needed uh, for victory. So, 
with her having contributed one success, that's all done. Uh, and we have one there toward that, and we continue our activation. Let's go to the soldier. Still three active leaks, meaning we need our life save. And we got it. Three on the nose, so we're safe there. No damage. Now the soldier, who has a move of four, is just out of range of being able to interact, because you can interact with an object that's an inch away from you. So she's going to just spend her whole move to get up there so that she can repair that next round. Because of the nano machines, she also healed one at the start of her activation. Next up, we have uh, our ace pilot. The ace pilot is uh, quite good at fixing things and so activates and we'll need to make her life save against the poison gas, which is successful there with four successes. She can also reroll one. Hey, even more successes. Now, yet again, she's way out of range, but she's just going to go ahead and move all the way up. And lastly, my medical officer, who has a base life of six, plus one for her hazard suit. And easily, because of that hazard suit and, and, and all of her training manages to protect herself there, takes no additional damage, heals one for the nano machines, and so is going to go ahead and also try to get up towards this objective. So she'll take her full move, just getting there into position. Okay, and with that and everybody moved, that is turn two. Moves us on to turn three. Now, how long does a game of Space Station Zero last? Well, the answer is it varies. The simple answer is until you complete everything you need to do to achieve the victory conditions. Although some of the challenges you'll encounter will have additional time limits on them where they can only be completed within a certain amount of time or must be completed within a certain amount of time before something catastrophic happens, uh, well, that your crew probably doesn't want to be around for. As we go into turn three, again, I have the activation. There is no more enemies. We've killed them all. So now we're just going to try to disarm the poison before it causes any more damage to my crew. Uh, we'll start with my engineer friend here, who again, the nano machines heal one, makes his life challenge. And with three successes, manages to ward off any additional damage. The engineer is then going to move up and make his reaction challenge against this obstacle down here. Now, the engineer has a base reaction of five. He's good at fixing things. Surprising, the engineer. Uh, the engineer also has a hyperscanner, which gives him two additional dice when he's making reaction challenge tests. So seven dice, and he needs three successes. Okay, no critical failures, and exactly three successes meaning that this poison gas leak is now repaired. There we go. And that then reduces the difficulty of the save for everybody in the future. My next activation will be my ace pilot right here. The ace pilot now has six to save against. Now a life save two, uh, since there is only two active poison gas leaks. And that's what the challenge instructs me is the number of the save is the number of active leaks. Gets three successes, easily saves, and so is going to now make the reaction test uh, to shut it down. Now the ace pilot has a reaction base of six and also has a hyperscanner for a total of eight. The ace pilot being the veteran, yeah, they've, they've seen a thing. They know what they're doing. Okay, with a stunning critical success... And five total successes, which turns into ten total successes. The ace pilot easily shuts off the poison gas leak. One left. We go to my leader, who now has to activate against a much lower number of only uh, a life save of one. Manages to get the one success, just barely. Actually, just the crit, I guess. Plus that, so I actually smoked it. Unfortunately, the leader... Good at many things as she is, repairing isn't. So she's going to shove some more duct tape or bubble gum 
whatever she can do here to try to get this this leak repaired. She takes a shot with her reaction of four and gets exactly the two successes she needs to quell the last poison gas leak. And with that, the challenge is complete. As you can see, pretty quick and easy to play. Uh, now that I've met the victory conditions, I would go to the post game process. I have nobody dead, so that's gonna be a lot quicker and easier as I progress down deeper into Space Station Zero. Challenge number one is complete. My intrepid space pirates victorious, ready to head deeper into the space station. From this point, the branching narrative takes over, and I might experience different challenges based on the flukes of fate. Uh, in this case, I didn't lose anybody, so I don't have to roll on the injury and death table. Normally, just because you go out in a, of action in a game doesn't necessarily mean your crew member is dead. However, Permadeath is a thing in this game, and you probably will lose crew members as you explore. The depths of the space station are very, very dangerous. So that's the bat rep complete. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got questions about how to play or anything on any additional mechanics or something I didn't cover, drop that down in the comments. Give this a like. Share this with people who you think might be interested. Remember, this game can be played solo, co-op, as a team game or in skirmish mode if you're trying to kill your friends. So no matter how you and your friends like to play, Space Station Zero has you covered. The 120 plus page book is available right now through the link below. Uh, it's $13 for the PDF alone or $18 for the PDF and the book. So really an incredible uh, deal for all that content. There's 24 uh, different challenges in the uh, narrative campaign, uh, six head-to-head -head skirmish challenges, and all the rules you need to create your crews and get playing. So thank you so much for watching this. I hope this was very helpful in you uh, deciding if you want to give this game a try. Uh, I certainly have had an incredible amount of fun making it, and I know you're going to have a lot of fun playing it. Thank you so much. As always, we'll see you next time.